Hey team, uh, this is Jason Simmons, one of the head mods over at Two Trading Group, and I want to go over RWLK and some of our trades for today. Um, we hit a couple singles, no home runs. Um, well, we'll have to talk about uh, WKHS because Jay actually uh, did hit kind of a home run with that one, so I want to go over that trade as well. So this RWLK was a quick 5% trade in the morning. Guys, you can see that the stock came up here, put in a wick, okay, and then that resistance became support here at 850, all right, stock had high volume, low volume, consolidation, okay, guys, and then we have a trade line VWAP cross coming up here, okay, I want you guys to notice how we came up here and couldn't really break through this 930 area. So as soon as we went and broke through this 930 area, I was long. We started to get the separation here. We had nice volume coming in. So we knew by looking at the daily chart. This is where I say you have to look at the daily chart when you're trading. Okay. Looking at the daily chart, we had to fill this gap here at $10. We also then had the 200 day moving average at 1040. So the goal here would have been to break 10, hold 10, and then go up towards the 200 day moving average at 1040. So let's go back to the intraday. So let's go back in time like we're looking at it. So we got this trade line VWAP cross upside. Okay. And I took some profits here at 980. All right. 990. And then guys, look. We get a doji here on some nice volume where we needed to break 10. As soon as we didn't break 10, and you see how the trade line here starts to curl down really quick? Instead of the trade line sitting there acting as support, the stock goes right down. I exited the trade with a 5% gain, 5%, you know, went on the trade. I didn't want to take, you know, let the stock give, give back all of my, my money. I don't want to take this winning trade and make it turn into a losing trade. I'm in tier one. I'm just going to take my money and go. If we break 10 like I need to see, then I'll look for a push up to that 200 day. Stuck to my game plan. And look what happened. Like I said guys, a single. But by being able to read the chart, looking and seeing that reversal sign here at a major pivot point, a gap fill entry in the 200 day, all right, we needed to break that 10. If we would have broke that 10 and held it, I would have held it and watched us try to go for this 200 day. We didn't. Exited the trade, moved on. Now, let's say, all right, this is what I talk about. As soon as you see the trade go bad, like you could have still held it during this time period Hopefully for you know so consolidation here, but then guys we got a warning here a trade line view out across the downside and then the trade line became resistance So if you're still holding the stock at this point in time It's not a bad idea because it really didn't you know fail or show you that it was not but my eye I know that's 10. I saw that. I see the trade line start to act. Instead of curling up, acting at straight, it starts to go sideways. I've seen this too many times. Guys, the more you look at charts, you guys will start to feel the heartbeat of the market. The more you trade these stocks, the, no, the more you know how they move. Now, when we get an all-out squeeze, FOMO's for real. All right, that's hard to judge. That just comes out of nowhere. So we have to take what the market's giving us right now. 
The SPY is up and down. The markets are real volatile. So I'm staying in tier one until I see a grade A setup. I'm taking profits and getting out of trades before they turn into losing trades. Okay, we are trading during you know a trade war where any word tariff or anything that has to do with trade comes across the news and the market can shoot either one way or the other knock you in and out of trades so it's important guys during this time that we stick to our game plan we watch our size we stay in tier one and still until we see a grade a setup so WKHS has kind of been a, a Trump pump. He's been talking about it a lot. Um, you know, so I've been watching this stock because it has a golden cross on the daily. Okay, it made a strong move up. It never filled the gap. And it's just been trading sideways after that huge move. So after yesterday's move, with the golden cross set up, Jay took an entry at 180 and sold today at two dollars and two twenty. You can see how the stock started to get some volume at the end of the day, came up, and then this kind of this kind of failed. But we had that volume at the end of the day, and then the next day we got some nice volume again, pushed it up, but we couldn't break 190. So Jay stayed in this trade. We had a trade line view up cross here, came up here to one. He stayed in it. Because it never broke back down to this 160 level. It stayed above here at this 170. It dipped down here for a second, but then, as you see, volume kicked back in today and kicked it back up into this, you know, next channel it was trading in before. When I talk about next channel, look at the daily chart. And you can see at 185, how it would come up to here, get smacked down, all these wicks. We held that 185 and broke into two. So look at all these wicks here at 220, 230. So we knew that we needed to take profits if we didn't see this area hold. We did see $2 hold. So if we see $2 hold, we'll be looking for it to make moves up to 250. Or it might move up here and just trade sideways for a minute. Trade between, you know, $2 and 267 as the 50-day curls its way up. Now, today's spike was on news that GM um, CEO was talking about WKHS um, all over Washington, saying that, uh, you know, people are talking about how is this company going to do it? How is this little company going to take over your plant? Because they need $22 million to do so. So we have to be really careful and watch our size on this because I have a feeling one morning it's going to gap up really big and then later on that day we're going to get an offering. 